In this notebook, we are going to learn what is the bias variance trade-off, how it relates to the concept of under and overfitting in machine learning problems, and finally, how we can detect and deal with it. Let's begin with bias and variance. There are two common types of machine learning errors. Bias explains the overall difference between expected predictions made by the model and true values, and variance, which describes how much predictions for the given point vary. A desired state is when we have low bias and low error, which means our algorithm is working precisely without much deviance. If you cannot imagine this, take a look, look at these graphics. It is very intuitive and self-explanatory. Now, let's see how these terms relate to the underfitting and overfitting. Take a look at the plot from the scikit-learn documentation. It presents a house size versus price chart. This example tries to fit a different polynomial regression to predict the price. For d equals to 1, our model is just a straight line. It's too simple for the data. We say that it suffers from underfitting, there is high bias. On the contrary, for d equals to 6, the line tries to fit each data point and does not generalize the problem. Here, we are experiencing the overfitting, the variance is high. The point is to find a compromise. We will get in the next section. In this example, let's assume that we want to adjust the number of created trees. We don't want it to be very simple or overcomplicated. Our plan will be following. First, generate complicated dataset. Prepare XGBoost parameters, then train the model for different values of trees using cross-validation, and finally, plot training and testing errors. As usual, begin with code loading required libraries and assuring reproducibility. Then, produce a difficult dataset of 1000 samples described by 20 features, where 8 are informative. The test will be performed with 10-fold cross-validation. Stratified k-fold object will shuffle the data, divide it into 10 buckets, assuring equal label distribution. For training purposes, we will define a fixed dictionary holding immutable parameters and an array with possible number of estimators. It will go from 1 to 200 every 10 trees, for example 1, 11, 21, up to 200. Finally, let's call a validation curve function, passing to it generated data, classifier with default parameters, cross-validation details, and most importantly, information about which parameter will be changing and how. In this case, it will be n estimators within previously defined range. Now, it's time to visualize the results. On the plot, you can see how accuracy depends on the number of created trees. The solid lines represent an average of results from each fold. You can draw the following conclusions. Training score, which is a red line, keeps growing alongside CV score, green line, when we add trees, but from a certain point, CV score gets fixed. Variance seems to rise and stabilize from about 25 tree. In this case, there is probably no point in adding extra trees. Let's assume that the trade-off for the model will be met for 50 estimators. This model obviously deals with high variance problem. Let's see what we can do about it. So, our model is too complex. We can try using less features, adding more training samples, or increasing regularization. In XGBoost, it can be done with reducing depth of each tree, max depth parameter, increasing min shield wild parameter, increasing gamma, adding some randomness, and finally by tuning regularization parameters like lambda and alpha. When the problem is high bias, which means our model is too simple, we can try adding more features, sophisticating it somehow, or decreasing regularization. In XGBoost it can be done with increasing depth of each tree, decreasing Minchel wild parameter, decreasing gamma, lambda, alpha, regularization parameters. 
let's try to improve the previous model a little bit. To reduce variance, we are going to introduce some randomness. Each tree will be using 70% of available training samples and 60% randomly chosen features. To decrease bias, which should also result in greater accuracy, we add an extra level for each tree. You can see what was changed here. Now, let's make the same plot one more time. As you can see, our training score now gets to about 100% accuracy, but it's not that important. What's important is that we have managed to improve the CV score for about 3% and reduce its variance. There is still a large gap between training and testing scores, so I recommend you to try tuning different parameters to make the model even better for unseen data.